what they need to use? Okay, nothing. I just praying. Just talking. Uh, I'm uh, Hypervista, and uh, and I am writing a uh, hypervisor uh, using uh, in part Phasm in uh, C language, of course. And um, one of the things that we want to do is to uh, show off Phasm, the power of Phasm in a hypervisor. And uh, one of the ideas that we have is we'd like to um, do a blue pill-like project only from the security standpoint where we don't want to use the hypervisor to demonstrate malicious code uh, you so know, a hidden, you, hidden root kit, yeah? I think you should first, not every, everyone may know Blue Pill and the hypervisor, the basic idea what it is. Maybe you could describe. Oh, oh, okay. A little, um, briefly. Yeah, so uh, hypervisor is a, uh, a very thin layer uh, OS whose uh, main function is to um, virtualize uh, other OSs. Um, a number of OS's. So you can launch five or six copies or more of Windows or, or mix it up, uh, launch uh, Linux, uh, and it runs uh, multiple OS's. Um, Intel and AMD recently added um, support or hardware support for virtualization in silicon. They've uh, extended the instruction set and you can make direct calls which makes uh, virtualization is so much easier. Uh, a lot of it, it eliminates the need for a lot of uh, binary translation, uh, which uh, uh, slows down performance quite a bit. So now we have the uh, possibility of launching virtual machines with almost no uh, performance hit if the if the code is written properly. Uh, Joanna Rostakowska, uh, a, a Polish programmer who works for a company in Singapore, recently did a uh, briefing uh, in Malaysia and uh, at Black Hat in the United States in Las Vegas. And her proposition was that she's written a hypervisor um, through her AMD and that it was that she would use that as a basis, or she said she didn't want to use, she wanted to demonstrate that you could do rootkit hiding via hypervisors. And it is very powerful and it can be done that way. Her claim is that it's undetectable. Uh, I don't believe it's undetectable. I think there are ways that you can detect it. But uh, it takes some work. Of course, the danger there, of course, is for, uh, for the average user, if they have a, uh, a rootkit hypervisor on their machine, their machine is essentially owned. And it doesn't matter what protection the user puts in application or user space, because the hypervisor is so much lower and controls everything. So that's why they're so powerful. I spoke with uh, Microsoft about nine months ago now, and, and I talked to the lead the programmer responsible for their hypervisor development, and he basically said to me that one of their biggest concerns, security concerns, is that a malicious hypervisor would be there before they got there. And they're working on a hypervisor themselves, which will be integrated into uh, future releases of Vista. But they're about two years uh, behind and won't be until late 2007, perhaps early 2008, before their hypervisor is ready. So that's what a hypervisor is. We'd like to show off FASM um, and build a, uh, an Intel-based hypervisor, but show it as a uh, uh, perhaps a, um, a security utility where we can have plug-in modules to provide uh, rootkit detection, um, intrusion detection at the hypervisor level. The advantages there, of course, are it's sort of a corollary to the dangers of a malicious hypervisor in that a white hat or a good hypervisor for security uh, the hackers cannot see it running, they can't turn off your protection, they can't alter it, it's, it's unseen to them. So uh, it provides a very good uh, good layer of, of, of protection. And that's our hope. So um, Thomas has already provided support in FASM for these extensions, and um, 
we're, uh, we're in the process of uh, trying to, uh, to get the project together. And once we get a little bit further along, we'll post on the FASM board uh, in the project section uh, where we are, and perhaps you uh, out there can, uh, can help us with that. So are there any questions about hypervisors? Uh, Generally not. Okay. Okay. For there, cool. uh, remind, the, yeah. for there, remind me to that uh, hypervisors control even rings, ring zero code, so it's very hard to detect it. Yes. You can detect it through timing, with, um, yes. uh, through resources like memory or disk it uses, which will be missing then. Right, an easier, actually an easier way to detect uh, whether a hypervisor is running or not using timing is to uh, loop on a large number of CPU ID instructions. The reason that would be effective is because CPU ID instruction forces a VMX exit. And meaning and that it uh, jumps to hypervisor hypervisor code. Yes, when 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 you set up a hypervisor using these new instruction sets, there are two modes. There's VMX on and or the VMX the VM itself and the VMM, the manager. And so the manager controls uh, what's happening in the virtual machine. If you're running in the virtual machine mode and you do a CPU ID, it forces you to exit from the VM temporarily. The VMM, the manager, handles the CPU ID and call and then hands back to the, uh, the VM. And so that switching uh, between the VM mode and VMM mode you can tell the timing. There's a timing issue there, and you can tell that. Oh, we've got a question. When was uh, VMX stuff introduced to AMD? Socket AM2 or previously? And when was it introduced? Uh, VMX virtualization introduced to AMD. Yes, AMD calls their Specifica, and, and they refer to theirs as SVM. Um, Intel uses VMX. Intel introduced their processors in June of this year. Yes, June of this year. AMD was maybe a month or so before that. Yes. Intel has many more products available. I have a support. question uh, from what you said. Uh, if hypervisor is saving itself, it must allow another hypervisor to install itself be below it. So you can have multiple you can, you, you can have nested hypervisors, but it gets very tricky because you have to emulate yes. them. You have to you have to really get into some emulation. So you have to emulate VMX on and VMX off instruction. Yes, you do. Right. That's so exactly right. it will be not so still once you have hypervisor running. It is possible for hypervisor rootkit to install below with them. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure that would be possible. That could be a method of detecting. Yes, that could be a method of on. detecting. Mm -hmm. When I talked to Microsoft about it, their solution, and it, and it may be unfair because it was sort of a, a question I had and I don't think they had a chance to prepare, but their, um, their response was, well, we will insist on a standardized uh, hypervisor across the industry and hypervisors uh, will be have tags in them, and so we'll look for that tag and to, can tell if there's a, uh, a hypervisor already there. So I don't know any hackers that are going to tag their hypervisors. Well, so it could be done this way that the top hypervisor will pop up a window asking the user some program is trying to use this instruction and do you all of it now. Yes. Or just blue screen. <laughs> Uh, Revolution has a question. You can also control read timestamp counter instruction with hyper hypervisor, so timing attack can be overcome. Uh, yes, yes, you, you can. have to. You, you have can. to trap. You have to trap that and then hand back false information. But if uh, time amount is long enough, you can use uh, user intervents, and he can compare compare the time test mm -hmm. on the. CPU it's also possible to use some external devices to do timing. Yes. Yeah. What kind of external devices do you, are you talking about? Uh, because, because 
just everything, almost everything is going to be controlled by some port access or, or so. But port access is controlled by your own ring zero, but not that hypervisor. But hypervisor can, or cannot it, or... It's not so some direct, it's harder, a bit harder. Uh -huh. Is it possible for hy hypervisor to restrict access to some port or uh, high... It is possible, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it would have to... Mm, you would have to know every kind of device someone might use. Mm. Yes, of course. Or just so to emulate it properly, yeah? For the first question, how expensive is a virtual mode exit and enter? Or enter? Is it higher than ring 0 to ring 3 and back? It's, it's similar. It is. It, it really does create, it causes uh, a lot of cycles to be chewed up. Yes. That's about all. Yeah, no, it's similar to uh, thunking. Mm. And uh, multi threading on processors uh, it was recently introduced. Um, has it still, or I'm not sure if that's the uh, right thing, if I am asking the right thing, has it something to do with this? Is it uh, some Influence on graphic hypervisor. Or you can improve performance by using uh, multi-threading uh, on dual-core processors. And uh, have you? Do you need to take this into account when writing hypervisor? Or no. I had a, a friend of mine suggest that we run the hypervisor on one core and monitor what's happening on the other core. And that's, of course, a possibility, but uh, so if there's an application running that requires two cores, then, you know, you can introduce yes. some problems. Okay, no more questions. Good, I'm off the hot seat. What? I'm off the hot seat. It's a phrase. <laughs>